Hello, flesh bags and philanderers. My name is TBS Guy, and God damn it, Riot, do you have to release these things all at the same time? Can I have five minutes? I'm trying to recover from the goddamn vaccine over here. So anyway, yes, new Unbound Thresh animation, and since I'm on record being distinctly displeased with Unbound Thresh as a concept, before we get to the animation of the thing, let's talk about the design, because he does look better in this short. To summarize, Unbound Thresh is a skin that was created because Wild Rift is marketed towards a younger market, and in some countries, ghosts and skeletons can raise a game's rating in the same way that blood, alcohol, and female nipples can over here. So, in order to get around the ratings board and put Thresh in Wild Rift, they had to make some changes. Trouble is, they decided to change one of the most monstrous champions in the game into a porcelain-faced, smooth-looking, sexy fuckboy with ghost abs, which rather ignores the fact that Thresh's story from day one has been the story of someone who loves being a monster and isn't interested in returning to a human form. I did a whole long-ass video about this, so if you want the full context, you can click the card up in the corner. Anyway, Axis Studios, and by the way, could I ask you all for a favor? Riot didn't initially credit the studio who did the animation in the video description, so if you want to do me a favor, anytime they publish new animation and they don't put the name of the studio in the description or they don't tweet the name out, could you all comment on it? Hey, what studio did the animation or something like that? Like, it's a small thing, but credit is important. Anyway, Axis Studios created this short for Riot, and they've made a few changes to Unbound Thresh's design to go along with it. First of all, he's no longer a porcelain smooth anime fuckboy. He has been noticeably aged up. His face has lines, folds, and wrinkles. It has texture, and as a result, in his undead form especially, he looks sallow, pale, and corpse-like rather than pretty. Additionally, they've done away with the ghost abs, changing the shape language of the glowing lines to look more like decorative padding. They kept the visual idea of cleavage down his middle, but at least it no longer looks like he's trying to be a thirst trap. Not that that's going to prevent anyone from being horny for him anyway, but that's the internet. Anyway, these changes makes this, in my opinion, a better version of Unbound Thresh, or at least one that feels a lot less directly contrary to who the character is as a person. But I still don't like Unbound Thresh very much. I feel like there were other ways to solve the censorship issue rather than turning the guy who loves being a monster back into a human, but if this is what we're stuck with, then I prefer this version over the vanilla one. And with that out of the way, let's go and gush over some really rather excellent character animation. Say hello to the main character of this piece of short animation. It's not Thresh, it is... Bort. And Bort is actually rather an excellent new character, because he's a very simple concept, frankly. He's a guy who lives in Noxus just trying to get by. He tried to pickpocket a mage, and the mage put a curse on him that gave him this uncontrollable crab arm. And because of that deformity, because he has this problem, he can't get work anywhere. So he's stuck at this tavern being a server while being violently abused. <laughs> pretty much by everyone, by the owner, by the patrons, like there are people who are kicking him as he's walking by the arm, like they throw stuff at him, they treat him just profoundly miserably and just really, like that guy just fucking kicks him, right? And he has to say sorry about it. And that lady like gives him an elbow. So just like from the first, what are we? Like if the first minute of the thing, we are already on Bort's side. Like he's clearly just like a nice man who's trying to do the best he can under difficult circumstances and just everyone treats him like shit, crap, and garbage. So when the turn comes where Thresh offers Bort a deal with the devil, as it were, Bort doesn't have very many reasons whatsoever not to take it, because, like, what's left for him at this time? Like, who who is he betraying, exactly? People who have made it their life's work just to abuse him constantly? And so by the end of this short, what Bort does is he takes Thresh's deal and thus becomes the driver of this carriage, like, being pulled by the spirits of the people who were in the tavern abusing him. And... This is one of the things that I really, really appreciate about the writing of this particular short, because this is what Thresh does. This is what he's all about. Thresh adores misery. He loves inflicting pain and suffering on people, and the only thing he loves more than inflicting pain and suffering on people is making people inflict pain and suffering on themselves and others. He has a fantastic story. Uh, well, not his story, really, but a story that he's involved with, which involves um, Ledros and Callista. Now, Ledros Ledros is Callista's lover from back when they were both still alive, and Ledros is trying desperately to make Callista remember who she was, and Thresh delights in manipulating Ledros into failing 
to convince or failing to stir memories of the past in Callista, and he delights in watching Ledros suffer as the woman he loves simply will not return to him. It's one of the, it's one of the stories that really reveals who the character is, and it's the same thing here. Thresh sees in Bort not so much like it's it's sort of easy to read this story as like Thresh is doing a nice thing for Bort, but. No, he's not. He's really not. What he's doing is he's causing more suffering. He sees in Bort an opportunity to create a torturer. And a torturer who, like, has good reason. Like, it's not... Bort is pretty justified in fucking hating these people. These people made their own goddamn bed, and Bort is just, like, serving them their just desserts when he cracks the whip over them. Um, like, it's their own damn fault, but Thresh isn't really doing a nice thing for Bort. As such, what he's doing is using Bort to further his own agenda. His own agenda of creating the absolutely maximum amount of suffering possible in the world. And that's what I really like about the writing in this short, is that it creates the situation where we have this character with whom we're very sympathetic, who kind of gets to have a little bit of an arc and kind of kind of gets to give these guys what they deserve at the end, which is sort of narratively satisfying. But once you start thinking about what actually happened, like Thresh killed Bort. Bort is dead now, and he's a ghost who's bound to Thresh's service for, well, presumably for eternity. And there's no guarantee that Thresh is going to continue to be nice to him, by the way. Like, just just saying that Thresh might at any point decide that it's more fun to torture Bort rather than to let him inflict the torture on others. Um, but narratively, you get this satisfying little arc where you see the abuses that Bort goes through, and then he gets the chance to get his own back. But it also works with just how awful and sadistic and cruel Thresh is as a character. That's really good writing, especially in a short that is only about like three minutes long, uh, three minutes, 30 seconds ish. So I just want to praise that, like, like the writing, the character writing is really good here. This is a really good use of Thresh's character to interact with other characters and sort of showcase what a, what kind of a, like a manipulator that he is, how exactly he goes about causing pain and misery out in the world um not just not just as like the the spooky ghost who's tearing people's souls apart and sucking them into his lantern and we'll talk about this bit later but also as someone who causes others to inflict more suffering into the world who manipulates people's fears their resentments their anger their own pain and suffering who preys on people who have pain and suffering in their hearts and like who can be manipulated into inflicting that suffering in turn on others because Bord is like not a cruel man like we never see him contemplating violence really um, until Thresh gives him the opportunity to get his own back like this uh, so there's also this element of corruption where like Thresh is sort of inducing Bort to indulge in his own, like, worst qualities of cruelty. And again, not that Bort is a bad person, not that he's evil. He's been put in this situation by that motherfucker right there, that the greedy capitalist asshole. But, like, again, it's, it's, just, mm, it's just really good character writing because you understand why Bort does the thing he does. You sympathize with it, even though, like, the ultimate result of it is, like, <laughs> maybe not the best thing that could have happened for him um because like imagine as a counterpoint if soraka had encountered bort she would be like oh why don't i just heal your curse and then he would be free from his curse and he could find himself a like he could go and have himself a better life free from the abuse of these motherfuckers right so it's not like it's not like thresh saves him or anything but it's just it's just good. Anyway, let's talk character animation. And Bort is also the highlight for me of this one. Like, Thresh has a few good moments as well. Um, but Bort is the highlight, and specifically because of the relationship between the man and the arm. <laughs> oh, it's really good. So, this is actually deceptively... Well, everything in animation is deceptively difficult. Like, everything is harder than it looks in animation. That's just the way it is. But... This relationship between the man and the arm, that this arm which is out of his control, this arm um, which like actively hinders and sabotages him, that's actually harder to do than you might think. And one of the best examples of it probably happens here. There, that one. That's one of the best examples of it, because normally, if a character is doing an action, right, like, if Bort was intentionally getting ready to slap the bowl of soup off the table, what would happen would be that there would be this moment of anticipation, where, like, he looks down at the bowl of soup because he needs to see what, he, what, what, he's, what he's going for, and you, you sort of see him, like, 
ready his muscles and get ready. Now, that moment of anticipation is there. You can see that the arm here, like that little wind-up that it does, like that one right there before it snaps the thing um, apart, that's the moment of anticipation. Now, if Bort had been doing it on purpose, the anticipation would be much more wide. Like, it, you would expect the animator to put the anticipation over his whole body. Like, you'd see him sink down the shoulders maybe a little bit, or, like, he'd change his posture, or, like, he'd, he'd incline his head downwards to see what he's doing. Like, something would happen. But the anticipation here is only the arm does the anticipation. And look how Bort reacts to it when it, when it does the thing. There. Like, this is the moment when he realizes what's happened after the thing has, do has, has done what it's going to do. Like, here he's blissfully unaware. There you see his expression change and like, oh shit, like he realizes what the thing has done. And now, like, his, he's, he's like processing it. His eyes chase the thing. He's looking at it as though it is a different person. Like, he's looking at it as though, what have you done, dude? Like, why would you do this? Um, and then, like, he reaches over and restrains it and kind of has to hold it down and goes, ah, um, and that relationship between man and arm, that's difficult to do. Like, that's a difficult thing to animate because you have to animate the arm as though it is a separate character from the person. Um, so, like, props to the animators for doing it. And this little thing here, right? Like, he's holding the arm down and then you get that. Like, that little thing of, like, you can see he's, he's sort of straining against it and it's straining against him. You can see it's fighting him. And that's, like, that's just really good. That's just really good character animation. But you also get the sense from him, like, that he's not, like... It's not like he doesn't know how to handle it. Like, he... Like, you can see that, like, when, when he's restraining it, it's like, he knows, okay, pull it down there, keep a keep a hand on it, make sure that it can't, like, jerk free from my grasp. So, like, he's also experienced with this. You also get the sense that, like, this is something that he's dealt with for a while. He's used to it. He can't control it, but, you know, that's the way it goes. And you also get that from, just from the character acting, like, especially this moment right here when we cut... That... Like, what's that gesture? Like, out, without knowing anything about anything that he's saying, what's that gesture? Like, what does that say to you? That's just like, ugh, like, it's like an, oh, well, what can you do? Like, it's this kind of resigned acceptance of the situation that he's in. You just sort of get, like, that weary sort of like, yeah, I mean, this is my life. This is just how I have to live. I mean, what are you going to do? His whole, like, his whole facial animation, everything about him is just all about, like, he's trying to explain this thing to the customer, like, it's a sort of amusing anecdote. Oh, yeah, I picked the pocket of a mage, and he put a sap on me, and now I got this thing, and snips around, and it just messes with things, like, oh, what are you gonna do? Like, you get that whole sense of, like, this defeated sort of acceptance of what's happened to him in his life. And here's something else I love, uh, like, you see it in, in all the work that Axis um, does for Riot. They are also responsible for the Tales of Runeterra animations, by the way. They are also responsible for uh, the first trailer for the Rune King game, I believe, was Axis as well. Um, and they've done a whole bunch of animation work uh, for Riot in the past. They're really good at the, like, especially this sort of um, slightly chunky um, fantasy painterly style, where like if you freeze any one part, you could kind of convince yourself that this was maybe like a 2D illustration and not a, a 3D model moving, which is something I really appreciate. Like, especially look at the texture on the hair in his beard, like the little individual strands. It's really nice. Um, but something I really like about Axis Animations is the mouth animation that they do for characters talking. Because it's so expressive. Like, look at this. Like, look at the gesture he does here. Like, like he's doing this gesture towards Thresh. And you can see he gestures with his mouth, right? Like, you see the mouth kind of pokes forward in this, like, ooh sound, whatever it, whatever it is he's saying. Um, and then, like, the, the head kind of follows into the motion, but it's the mouth that kind of leads it. Like, he pushes forward with his lips. Then tilts the head down and then sort of looks up and like you can see he's inclining himself towards the customer which again gives the sense of like this is a man who's like begging for understanding he's like yeah I mean this is this is just this is just how I have to live I'm sorry sir but like I hope you don't I hope you don't don't find too much fault with it you have to be careful who you mess with in Noxus and Thresh is like oh really you have to be careful do you um and this is the moment when Thresh like identifies oh Bort is a potential victim and by the way a little inspiration from Loki here, <laughs> just like the with the suit, um, especially because that's like a very modern looking suit, isn't it? Like that's very a very modern looking suit jacket. That's kind of the same criticism that I had um, of Diego's character design is that this is like this is like a very mod like with the suit, with the tie, with the vest. It's also like you can also argue oh, it sort of quasi fits in the Victorian slash Edwardian era that some parts of Runeterra exist within, but 
it is a very modern design uh, for the character. It works, but it's also a little, like, it's not quite the same as uh, Mr. Proprietor over here, a uh, shitty capitalist man who's constantly abusing Bort for something that he really has no control over. I also appreciate this first shot, like, especially along with the sound design. You get the sense, like, he's walking through this fog, right? Like, so, but but the fog that he's walking through is just, like, the, like, just, just the fog coming, or the, um, the steam. It's the steam coming off the bowl of soup, and yet, like, look at the way that he's walking. Like, you can see he's he almost walking like he's haunted, right? Like, he's like, oh, something's out there, something bad is gonna happen, and then, oh my god, it's a claw! Like, then the claw comes in like Jaws. Um, as he's kind of, like, looking around, you can see he's like, oh, something bad is going to happen. He just knows it. And then when it finally does, duh, like, it's like, and that's also, by the way, the way we're introduced to the claw is not as a part of Bort, but as a thing that's coming at him from the outside. Um, and it's not until, like, we, we cut to a different shot that we see that it's actually his own arm. And they're doing a little bit of trickery here. Because um, if you take a look at Bort's arm here, like there's no way his arm is long enough to reach all the way out there and then come back in this way, like with by bending at the elbow. Literally no way in hell that's possible. So you can see when we change the shot that his pos the position of his arm has completely changed in order to make it plausible that like this claw is sort of coming at him. Um, it's a little bit of animation trickery, but it gives you that sense of, like, this claw is a foreign thing. It's like an alien thing that's an antagonist to him. So, like, even here, like, after seven seconds, we know that the claw is antagonistic to him, that he doesn't control it. And that he's, like, not... Like, he's being hindered by it actively. And this is another thing, like, I love the, the, the use of weight here. Because the claw, like, lunges for the soup because it's trying to knock the soup over, right? And as it lunges, you can see the weight of it pulls Bort forward, so he kind of has to catch himself with one leg here. And then, like, it keeps trying to sort of chase the uh, the, the bowl of soup, and then is like, gives up and decides to go in another direction. And you can see how that pull, like, it pulls him off balance. So again, he kind of has to run to catch himself, and then it, like, swoops upwards. And that's when you can see he sort of follows with his body, finally plants himself and restrains it a little bit. Like, there, you can see, like, he's sort of planting himself to sort of find his center to sort of, like, get goddamn wrestling with the thing. Like, get under control. Urgh. There. And then <laughs> this motherfucker with the golden eye. Like, you just take one look at this guy and you know, you know what kind of greasy asshole this dude is. Like, with the gold tooth and the gold eye. And, like, those thick eyebrows and that angry expression. Like, Bart, get yourself over there, you crustacean fool. And here also we get the introduction to Bort's relationship with everyone else. Everyone else thinks that the shitty thing that's happening to him, his misery, is funny. Ah ha ha ha, look at Bort with his, like, magic curse claw that is making his life miserable. That is a funny thing to us, so Bort has to do this little gesture, like, clamp it under his elbow, and look at the way he's walking here. Like, look at how, like, the, the hunched over posture and, like, this sort of defeated look in his eyes. Like, this is a man who's kind of broken, right? Like, this is a man who's, like, really, like, who has to apologize for himself all the time because of things that are, like, that are just objectively not at all his fault. And yet, like, here he is struggling to do his job, tr struggling to do anything. And in case anyone's wondering, yeah, I think uh, the soup in the bowl... Actually, you can probably zoom in on it and see... I think the soup in the bowl is hand animated. It certainly looks that way. It could be like a, a physics engine generated 3D liquid that they've just kind of painted um, soup bits on. But it looks like it could be hand animated. There's some more hand animated things later in um, in the short, though. Um, and by the way, a little production note. Most of the environments that you see here, like most of the things that the character are interacting with, are probably 2D illustrations. So, like the pillar behind him, most of the tavern, the backdrop, the backgrounds, all 2D illustrations. But the characters in them are typically... Um, 3D models that are programmed to do like that that are animated with like just a minimum of little little things that they do. It's probably easiest to see on the dude sitting over here, right? You see, he has this little sort of sort of fiddly gesture where he like he changes the position of his arm a little bit, and he like he does a little sort of idle fidget thing um, in the background. And most of the characters I I see in the background of this thing are 
animated, which is something that's it's a little bit unusual because like I've seen shorts before where they've just painted like static patrons in the background of a bar scene like this because like who, who needs them to move? But as far as I can tell, they're all animated. They could be 2D animated, but I doubt they'd go to the trouble of doing that. But um, the backdrops are painted. Like they're all painted 2D illustrations that are then layered into a 3D scene. Um, so the table here in front of Bort is probably a 2D illustration. It could be a 3D object, but it's probably a 2D illustration that's layered on top of what the character anima uh, animation is doing um, as po the poor guy is trying to give the explanation for the thing. And he, like that shrug also, like that shrug, you just know how he feels, right? You can just tell, like, uh, what's his attitude towards all this? Well, I mean, yeah, it's like I can't do anything about it. I just kind of have to roll with it. This is just what my life is like. Man, I mean, you sympathize so much with the poor guy. Like, he's got such a rough lot in life. He doesn't want any of this. He's just trying to make the best of it as much as he can. And his optimism, too. Like, well, I mean, optim optimism is putting it, putting it maybe a little strongly. But the fact that he hasn't fully given up. That, like, there's a part of him that's still sort of trying to be cheerful and sort of trying to just to get by. Even though everything for him is so fundamentally crap. And we can also talk about framing here. Like I said in the intro that I like this Thresh better um, than the base vanilla version that he has in the skin. And yeah, I do. I still think he should have looked like the actual canon human Thresh that they already made for the Realms of Runeterra book. I think it's very silly that they made a Thresh and said, like, this is canonically human Thresh. And then they don't use him for anything. But yeah, this is better. And the framing of him in this animated short does a lot of the work there because again in the splash art that he has he's framed as a porcelain smooth handsome fuckboy right like who's trying to to be sexy and good looking here this is not like he's not framed as a sexy handsome fuckboy this is framed as a serial killer scoping out his next victim like that's the way he's sitting right where his arms are just like down along his sides he's just sitting there without doing anything like he doesn't have his arms up he's not fiddling with anything he's just like staring at Bort in like this really creepy very still way which is like oh um so the framing does a lot to make the design more creepy more scary and more like unsettling and monstrous uh rather than just making him look pretty which I really appreciate here's another little like this gesture I mean, look at that gesture. It's so... Oh, and another thing I like. Look at the edge lighting on this guy. This is the other thing. It's, this is one of the things that makes these shorts from Axis Studios look so painterly. Like, look so much like moving paintings. It's the way that they use things like this completely, like, blood red edge lighting around the guy to really communicate the warmth of the interior. But that's something, like, that you're more likely to see on an illustration rather than a, like, a 3D animation that's using any kind of realistic lighting. Like, this edge lighting is really... Really very illustration-like, and I really appreciate it. Anyway, um, that gesture right there. Like, again, you get the attitude of this man, right? Like, like he lowers the center of gravity just so he can do that big, that, uh, that big, like, strong, ooh, I am a, I'm a man who's yelling at a person who I think is less than him kind of attitude. Like, you get that from him, right? And Bort, poor Bort, completely overloaded with plates and bowls, and because the guy's yelling at him, he doesn't have his attention on, on the arm, and he doesn't realize what the arm is doing until, uh-oh, right there, way too late, and then, whoop, it snatches a plate, and smashes it over his head, while he's busy trying to keep the stack upright. And, like, this is the thing, is, like, Bort just has a fucking disability, right? Like, if you had some other servers who could maybe, like, unload him so he doesn't carry a huge stack of plates and he could keep an eye on his arm, maybe shit wouldn't get this bad. Like, the poor guy. Like, you just you just feel nothing but sympathy for him because, like, everything goes wrong for him. And how do people react to seeing him be miserable? Once again, derision, laughter, and by throwing food at his head, like, fucking hell. It's a realistic portrait of the treatment of workers in the service industry. Let's put it like that. And again, like, the relationship between Bort and the arm, right? Like, he's walking forward. You can see the arm is, like, jiggling around and being unruly. And then it does this. Like, you can see it's it's like he's being pulled by a rope or, like, someone grabbed him and, like, pulled him by his arm. But it's actually just this goddamn thing <laughs> that's picked up a knife and is trying to stab him. It's a comedic scene. Like, it's funny, but it's also like, Jesus... The poor dude. And then he tries to, like, deliver some food, which he, which is what he's being told to do. And then... This asshole... 
kicks him and is like, motherfuckers. And he says, sorry for being kicked. Like, oh, fucking, I just, I just, they, they get what they deserve. All of them. They all get what they deserve. Like, and it's not a great thing that Bort has been turned into a torture ghost, but they get what they fucking deserve. And again, we see th the relationship between Thresh and Bort is that Thresh is staring at him like a serial killer scoping out a victim because he realizes, oh, I can use this. Right? Like... <laughs> uh, creepy. And that's what makes the design feel a lot better um, than it does in the splash art, or indeed in his freaking Wild Rift, or in his freaking character model, is that here he's framed not as a sexy man, but he's framed like a monster. He's framed like a predator. He's framed like something evil, scary, and dangerous. Again, I still don't like Unbound Thresh, but if you gotta have it, this is like the better way to do it. And then there, he, like, he dusts himself off, and he's like, can I get you a warm bowl, sir? Like, he's still trying to be serviceable. Like, he's still trying to be a good waiter to this man. Like, Bort, you're such a good kid. You don't deserve any of this. And then notice the contrast, by the way, with the way that Thresh is animated relative to, for example, like the, the inn owner, right? The inn owner who's like always sort of doing these these big gestures like, Bort, get that thing out of there! Like big pointy gestures and like, like pulling himself up and such. Take notice of how Thresh moves. Small movements, very subtle movements. Like he leans forward ever so slightly and like pushes the bowl of soup out of his way as he says, I'm saving my appetite because he's a creepy serial killer so he can't resist telling people that he's gonna murder them, right? Um, <laughs> um, but Thresh moves with like, um, and there's also a contrast between him and Bort where Bort is often like uncontrolled and like always kind of catching himself, like trying to, trying to sort of uh, gather his balance, trying to keep himself steady. Thresh is completely steady and moves very slowly and deliberately relative to what Bort is doing. And that contrast between the two characters is also quite nice. I also like this coin, which has like the face on one side and then the skull on the other. Uh, that's just a clever little like reference to Thresh's true nature. Like again, he can't resist telling telling people who he is <laughs> and letting them know that he's a monster that's going to kill them. Um, because of course he can't. He's a sociopath and he enjoys people's suffering. And again, some lovely facial animation on this character. Because again, like, the way that Thresh talks, like, that slow, deliberate head movements. Like, none of, like, Bort has this sort of, he, like, he does, you remember how I talked about he did this gesture where he pushes forward with his mouth and then he lowers his head. And, like, he's, he's, he's a little bit more unsteady. Where Thresh has this much more, like, he moves in these smooth, controlled motions. And then there, again... Notice the way that this man moves, right? Like, it's not just that he snatches the coin, it's that he reaches in like so, does a little wiggle with his fingers, then he snatches the coin right out of his hand. And then it's like, even there, like this gesture, when he's just turning in order to grab the side of his coat so he can pocket the coin, it's still this, like, big gesture of, like, holding the coin up and depositing it in his purse, and then, like, chewing out Bort for things that he has no control over. I'll put it towards your debt. Because he can't resist just abusing the man at every given possible opportunity because he's a piece of shit and he deserves to die. Um. <laughs> oh, right. Little thing. Uh, the smoke that Bort brushes away there, hand animated. And one of the ways that you can tell, uh, let's zoom in on it, is that it is not animated at the same rate as the 3D animation. Th the 3D animation, because it's 3D animation, uh, you can just move at 24 frames per second, or probably 25 or 30 in this case, um, because like it's 3D animation that's one of the benefits, but 2D animation is a little bit like, if you do that at 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second, that's a lot of frames you have to make, so instead, you can see how the scene moves, then the smoke moves, then the scene moves, then the dust moves, then the scene moves, then the dust moves, then the scene moves, then the dust moves. On this, like, two-frame cycle um, that gives it a slightly different movement aesthetic. And then when we need a really smooth motion from it, like here, when we need the, 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 the dust to, like, smoothly dissipate, 
then we animate it on ones because we need that extra smoothness for like the fadeaway, um, which is stuff that you can do with with well, you can do it in three D animation too. Like there's been a lot of good three D animation made with limited frame rates where they they like experiment with limited frame rates in order to imitate the look of two D animation. A lot of three D anime does this. And you can see the claw is scared, like it's shaking because it knows that what, what Thresh is, and the Thresh is gonna kill it. Thresh is gonna kill the claw. The claw knows this. It knows that he's dangerous, um, which is lovely. Skipping ahead a little bit. So the smoke that comes out from the side of the door. Um, I'm advancing a frame back and forth right now. It's really hard to see because not much else is happening, but the smoke as well. Uh, let me see if I can do it with the sound actually. One, two, 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 one, two. Smoke is also animated on twos, and it's hand animated. So here is a thing I quite like in terms of the storytelling as well. And one of the things that makes me feel like a little bit less miserable um, about the Unbound Thresh skin is that what we see here is that the human face is not his true form. His true form looks like this. The human face is a disguise he puts on. And that's revealed to us most explicitly here. Because it's not until he needs to talk to Bort, it's not until he needs to practice his little corruption, that's when he puts the human face on, like a mask, like fades it in over um, over like his, his terrible real visage. And the most explicit confirmation of all happens right here. Have you spotted it? It's not that hard to spot. It's right there. That is Thresh's true form, as revealed by his shadow, where he still has the skull face, where he still has, like, the bone tentacles with the, with um, with chains on them. He still has his true form. What we're seeing here, Unbound Thresh, this version of him, as far as the storytelling goes in this short, that is only a costume. It's only a costume that he's putting on to cover up what he really is. And again, if we have to have this human version of Thresh, then this is how I prefer to think about it. Like, it's it's not his true form. That's the thing that annoyed me a lot about Unbound Thresh when he was first revealed, is was the implication from the story that Thresh has sucked up all this soul energy from the Ruination, and now this is his true form. He's returning to his true form, reclaiming his humanity, which, like, no, Thresh is not human. He doesn't want to be human. He hates being human, because being human means being limited in the sadism and cruelty that he can do. He likes being a monster because it makes him more able to do the monstrous things that he always wanted to do back when he was alive. He loves being a monster, and what we see here is that as far as the storytelling of this short, at least, is concerned, he still is. Unbound Thresh is a costume. It is not the true form of the man, and that, again, is one of the reasons why, like, I still don't like Unbound Thresh, but if we have to have him, then this is the version I prefer, where Unbound Thresh is merely a costume, literally a skin, um, rather than being the canonical representation of what Thresh is supposed to look like. Anyway, uh, th some 3D animation here. Uh, it's all 3D animation, obviously, but the door that explodes here. So, this is a 2D illustration. Like, this is just an illustration of part of the background, same as anything else. Then here, you can see this two-frame thing where, like, here we just take some chunks out of the door, and then we just delete the door, right? We just make the door not exist anymore, and we replace it instead with a bunch of this stuff, which is just, like, tumbling debris that just kind of falls over and falls down, which is all 3D animated. You can see it's it's probably a procedurally generated physics simulation or something that's doing a lot of this. Um, and if you sort of pay close attention and zoom in on it, you can kind of see that the lighting on these little pieces of, of like stuff, it doesn't really work. It's not nearly as painterly and sort of precisely calibrated as the, as the aesthetic of the rest of the scene, because the rest of the scene is painted, of course, so they can do whatever the hell they want with the lighting. Um, it, they're sort of primitively done, but they don't really need to be very complicated because, like, you can't see them. They're they're on screen for, like, a second. It doesn't really matter. Anyway, smoke, uh, again, still hand animated. Um, and you can see here this tendril of smoke not moving while everything else moves, and then everything moves, and then, then only the 3D objects move in this part of smoke, then that part of smoke moves. Animated on twos, in case anyone's curious. Um... So that's a thing there. And then this lovely bit. Like, here's Thresh, like, in his element doing what he really loves to do, which is to hurt and torment people for no other reason except he thinks it's fun. Um, 
And this is really, like, this is just really good. Whew, that. Like, the way that they use, like, this this wisp of ghostly energy like that kind of trails behind the arm as it vanishes. And then we get... There. This. That man, that soul spirit thing. You can see here, Thresh moves, then the spirit moves. Thresh moves, then the spirit moves. Thresh moves. Animated on twos as it gets pulled into the lantern and completely distorted and torn apart. And man, that looks so cool. That looks so good. Like, that's just such a good bit of 2D animation. Like, God, that looks horrifying, right? Like, he's practically melting as he gets pulled into Thresh's lantern. Like, oh, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. Meanwhile, the smoke effects coming off of Thresh, like the flame effects coming out around him, they are still very much, like, uh, generated by, um, by the 3D animation software with this lovely effect as the mask fades away, or, well, the mask fades on, rather, and Thresh reveals himself. And this is such a good shot as well, because it's right, like, you notice the, the, the cute little, little thing of, like, as Thresh vanishes behind the pillar, that's when, like, his true face comes into view on the wall. And that's a clever thing, because, like, because the character himself is disappearing, that gives us a moment to, oh, let's look at something else that's moving. Oh, hey, that shadow's moving. Oh, it's the skull! And then, you like, you get this moment to notice the thing by obscuring the, like, the physical character. You get to see the true form sort of reflected, which is, like, ah, it's clever, clever, clever. Very clever thing to do. And I quite like... Like, again, look at Thresh's body language. Look at his movement. Look how controlled he is in what he does, and I love this expression on him as well, because, like, that's why you kind of see that's not, like, that's not anything that's seductive, that's not anything that's even dignified, this is like he sees a victim and it's like the crazy eyes come out, like, he fully goes Joker on this one um <laughs> as he sees something to kill uh bye bye, poor you This is so good too. Like, just look at the speed of that movement, and look at the there's there's a, there's a gentle little distortion happening here. Um, you can kind of see it here. You can see how the, how everything kind of shifts perspective a little bit because a fish eye lens is introduced just a little bit to sort of heighten the sense of speed as the claw or the uh, hook streaks out towards its poor victim. And then this, I really appreciate this. The the chain is, is like you can see it's it's not snapped taut yet. It's still sort of wobbly. And then you get like you get this wave propagating across it, and then zook, it snaps taut, and then you see the pole, like, zoom! <laughs> Hand I made it smoke once again, of course. Like, oh, that's just well done. That's really well animated. It gives a sense of, like, how powerful Thresh is. And another thing that does that, by the way, is, like, look at how he catches the guy, right? So this is a human body flying at him at full speed, right? How does Thresh catch it? Completely still. Like, he doesn't react, he doesn't recoil, there's no sense of any kind of physical interaction. That guy just kind of enters his hand and is stopped like he ran into a brick wall. And that physically, like, visually, that just communicates how powerful Thresh is at this point. Being a champion, first of all, being one of the most powerful creatures in Runeterra because of that, but also because, like, he's absorbed so much ruination juice uh, that he can just kind of do that. <laughs> that an ordinary person wouldn't ha stand a physical chance against him, which makes him scary, like, which makes him terrifying. And I like the pose on Thresh here as well, because, like, look at that, like, look at the S-curve that goes up through that, like, look at that supreme sense of confidence and power that he projects, especially relative to poor Bort, who's, like, holding up the arm, trying to protect himself, to kind of sort of trying to shrink away. Thresh is just taking up as much space as possible because he owns the room, right? Like, you get that sense. And here's a lovely bit of trickery. So, um, the ghost energy uh, coming off the body as it dissolves, that, of course, is 2D animation, and it's hand-animated. So what they do with the body is that they just kind of gradually, you can see, they just kind of fade it out. Um, they Like, there's no actual moment of, like, transformation. It's just that the body fades out, and then over top of that, they draw this 2D animation as it fades away. Um, which gives you the sense, like, which gives you the a convincing sense of the body being drained and turning into, well, c turning into juice uh, for Thresh's Lantern. And again, look at, look at the guy, like, as he comes out, like, even now, he's like, <laughs> he's hearing screaming and death noises and shit. 
Um, and now he sees Bort and his first instinct is to abuse him. Like, even now, his first instinct is to be a shithead to Bort. And even now, look at his character animation. Look at how ostentatious he is. Like, these big gestures of like, Bort, get out of the way. I'm the owner here. Bonk. <laughs> As the claw does the first nice thing it's ever done for him um, and smacks him. <laughs> you deserve that. And again, the same thing, like where Bort doesn't realize what the claw has done until then he sees it and he's like, oh no. And he drops the candle like in shock because he, he really doesn't like hurting people yet. He doesn't like hurting people yet. But there's the coin and there's the offer, the bargain. And here's something I love. Here's here's a really just oh like he, if you if you need a good reason to give Thresh a human face, like if we need to have one, this is it. That do you see that? <laughs> do you see that little eyebrow thing he does? Like he's looking at Bort and he does that little eyebrow. Like get a load of this guy. Look at that. That's such a good little bit of facial animation. Again, don't really want Thresh to have a face, but if he must then please animate it like this, because that's gorgeous. Like, that's just... That's mm, that's character. That's just... Mm, that's a good moment. That's a lovely little charming thing that he does. Um, and I also like... Like, when you see Thresh looking at, at the guy, right? Like, at, at the owner. There's no... Like, there's contempt there. There is only contempt. There is only hatred. But then he looks at Bort. And instead of contempt, it's like, hey get a load of this guy. We're co-conspirators, you and I. We're kindred spirits. You're a little bit like me. You also were cheated out of, like, the justice that you deserve. Don't you think that you should be, like, don't you think that you would should join me in this thing? And that's the other part of Thresh's story. Like, part of the reason why Thresh turns into a monster is that, like, he's this kind of narcissistic, sort of self-obsessed, uh, kind of cruel person who's, like, who's not very nice to people at all, who's Basically just a huge asshole. No one wants to be around him. And he keep he has this feeling always like that he's he's meant for greater things. That like he's too good for this place. Like he's that kind of little petty asshole is like, yeah, I'm too good for these people. Here. Like one day I'm gonna show him a like he's that kind of person, right? He always he's he's someone who's always felt in his life like other people were holding him down. And that's why he he feels like enough of a kinship with Bort to offer him a deal rather than just to destroy him is because he feels in Bort like yeah I'm I, I was every bit as put upon like I was abused the same way that this guy was like that's how Thresh sees himself he feels that little bit of kinship that makes him offer a deal rather than just destroy him um which again because it's Thresh like there's no guarantee that Thresh isn't just gonna turn around and, and like torment Bort sometime in the future uh, especially if Bort ever changes his mind and, and doesn't want to hurt people anymore like if, if he gets his fill of vengeance and it's like maybe this is wrong actually maybe we should stop torturing them Thresh is gonna turn on him immediately because that's the kind of guy Thresh is but again that's the, that's the writing of this thing that's quite good is that there is this sense of like Thresh has sympathy for Bort, um, not because he has any human empathy with anyone, but because he sees in Bort someone who could be corrupted into being a kindred spirit, someone who could be convinced to become a torturer the same way that Thresh decided to become a torturer. And I quite like that. That's quite good. And you can also just see the delight on Thresh's face as he's, like, slowly bringing the lantern closer. Like, you can see it's not that he wants just to kill the guy. He wants to see the guy be scared. He wants to see him suffer and beg and, like, live in fear for the last few moments of his existence. He wants it to be slow. You can see, like, he's slowly pulling the guy towards it. He's enjoying it. He's savoring the moment. He's having fun with this because Thresh is a monster. He's not a man. He's a monster. He's not a person. He's a monster. That's the point of him. Which is where Thresh now offers the deal. And you can see here that the way he looks at Bort also becomes a little different here. There's an intensity there now where he says, like, like where he lays out basically his thesis, like, that there's two sides to every transaction and that Bort's suffering is this man's profit. So shouldn't you, Bort, shouldn't you get your fair share of this? Shouldn't you get your own back? Like, this is the moment of corruption where he's, like, inviting Bort to become a little bit more like him. And Bort has no reason not to. Like, that's the other thing that's beautiful about this. It's not that Bort is an evil person. It's that, like, his circumstances are so fucking horrid that, like, 
This is an improvement for him. Dying and becoming an undead wraith that fairies thresh around for all eternity is an improvement to his situation. Why? Because that asshole that Thresh is about to kill made his life miserable because people didn't care for him. People didn't, like, reach out to him and offer him any empathy, and when you don't do that, well, then he becomes vulnerable to being corrupted by assholes like Thresh. Then he becomes vulnerable to being turned into a tool for a much greater evil. So, you know, when I end my videos by telling you to have empathy with those who are worse off than yourself, <laughs> this is why. Uh, this is dramatization, obviously. There aren't that many lantern-wielding lunatics and maniacs walking around out there stealing people's souls, but, you know, it happens in other ways. More realistic ways. I like that expression on his face, too. Like, again, if you must give Thresh a face, then at least give him interesting expressions. At least give him a face with, like, a distinctive nose and a cool jawline and something that's, like, actually looks like a person rather than looking like a porcelain doll with a superiority complex. Um, like, yeah, look at that. There's some there's some character to that face. Like, there's some, there's, there's some energy there uh, that I quite appreciate. And again, the eyes, the crazy eyes. Like, you get the sense, like, this This is contempt, right? You see that little curl of the lip? Like, he goes from this this sort of half-friendly smile to that. You see how the lip curls? You see that look of contempt on his face? Like, you see the evil in him, right? It's good. It's really, really good. I really like it. And then we transition out. More hand-animated ghost effects, obviously. As Thresh flips the coin around, walks into the carriage, and this idiot gets what he deserves. Like, again, I have no sympathy for these people. They got what they deserved, even if they do look a little bit too much like Fortnite characters here, maybe. Um, they they got what was coming to them, and, like, I wish, I wish Bort could have had a nicer ending, but, you know. This is probably the best you're ever gonna get from Thresh. And so it ends. And this is a very good animated short, by the way. Like, again, still don't like Unbound Thresh, but I do like this short. I do like what this short does with his character. I do like the storytelling that's on display here because it's really good. Like, it's really, really solid storytelling. It's really st solid filmmaking, just overall. It's a story that I empathize with. Like, I, if someone wants to write some fan fiction about Bort, like his life maybe before it got this shitty and miserable... I'll definitely read it, because that's a good character. That's a really good character. I really wish... I really wish we could have some characters in, in League of Legends, the video game, also, who, like, maybe are a little bit like Bort, who just are, like, these slightly not beautiful people who have, like, troubles that are not all about dead parents. Just, like... This is a good character. I wish to see more characters like him. More characters that are like have that level of human relatability rather than being these impossibly beautiful sculpted superhumans. That would be nice like to have in addition to your pantheons and your like ashes and kaisas to have this also would be nice. That that would be a nice thing, right? I would like that. Anyway, if you've enjoyed another 45 minutes of me baffling on about animation, then you can hit the like, comment, and or subscribe buttons down below. They'll let you know when I do another video like this, uh, or videos that aren't like this. I do a lot of videos that aren't anything like this at all, so if you want to see that, also like, comment, and subscribe. And if you don't want to see that, I mean, I guess I can't recommend that you like, comment, and subscribe under those circumstances. Uh, I mean, I'd still like you to do it, but, but I can't recommend it if you don't like videos that aren't like this, because there's some of those on my channel as well. Anyway. Uh, right, I have a second channel, also, uh, where I do Let's Plays, play video games, and I have a short channel where I do very short videos about things, so if this is a little bit too much for you, well, the short channel could give you, like, stuff that's more digestible in, in a minute or two. Um, I have a Patreon, a merchandise store, and a tip jar. You can use them if you want to. Uh, every dollar is about the same as a thousand views on a video, so it helps me out a lot with my rent and stuff when people support me on there, but if you're not in a position to be able to, or you just don't want to, you absolutely do not have to. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to wear a mask and wash your hands, even still. Take the vaccine. I have had my second dose, and I fortunately avoided most of the bad side effects. And try to act with solidarity, please, towards those who are worse off than yourself. Mm -hmm.